Welcome. This is Jeff from Locksmithing Innovations. This is also video 14. I want to thank all the viewers and subscribers and I've been wanting to shoot this video for quite a while but before I start on the subject in the video I want to give a shout out to a couple people. I want to give a shout out to Ryan. You've seen comments on my other videos from him. He was gracious enough to loan me his high-end Sony camera to shoot this video as a test. Um, the Canon point-and-shoot, little cheap point-and-shoot I was using before kept shutting down. Uh, and I have to reshoot the video or I'd have to go into editing and I didn't really want to do that. So thank Ryan for loaning me this. Um, hopefully I can get through this video without an issue. Um, and I also want to give a shout out to Curtis and his team from Distill Media. I did Curtis a favor a while back and in exchange for that, uh, Curti Curtis uh, said he would do me a favor and he produced the uh, Locksmithing Innovation uh, logo, him and his team, and I thank him very much for that. Uh, so, as you know, Locksmithing Innovation, Innovation is the channel that's about tools, tips, and tricks to make locksmithings, locksmiths and aspiring locksmiths uh, and anybody who works on locks and hardware's job easier. Okay, video 14 is all about uh, the mortise cylinder uh, adapters that I've come up with to assist in drilling holes in astricals either flat or three bend astricals or hollow metal or wood doors that mortise cases are installed in um, if you want to put a a second mortise cylinder via key on both sides of the door and the door only came prep with one hole whether it be wood or hollow metal or you want to put a thumb turning key on a mortise case uh, situation now I've always known these as mortise cases. I know some people call them mortise cassettes. I would really love to have the comments back on what they're, what you think they're called. Uh, I was always uh, informed that they were mortise cases, but I've heard a lot of people refer to them as mortise cassettes. So I'd like to know what in your area as a locksmith, these are referred to. Now, this is ANSI standards. Obviously, Euro are different mortise cases. Um, but uh, please let me know. I'd also like to start this video by uh, talking about a technician I worked with for about three or four months. A uh, senior technician. Uh, he's gone on to be middle management and manage other technicians. Uh, up to 25 of them or so and help and assist in them uh, furthering their knowledge and becoming better technicians. Um, when I first worked with them on a, a job at a, a, a banking institution, we had quite a bit of work to do on the inactive and active door, so we both went to it. And he uh, says, oh, he's got this great method of... Uh, prepping uh, the astrical for the mortise cylinder. And since I, he was new working with me, I let him take the lead and, and uh, do it his way and hoping I would learn something. And it turned out he did what I used to do 10 years earlier. And we'll get into that in a few minutes and explain how this uh, whole process evolved. Um, commercial aluminum door. You either have an MS bolt normally locking the door, normally on storefront, or on access control with electric strikes, you normally have as well uh, a dead latch, which is a 4513. In my day, it was a 4510, different back sets. 
uh, normally 31 30 seconds or inch and an eighth as well as there's the metric conversion now uh, I believe 226 and 326 is the metric conversion and these are the MS bolt or also which is an MS 1850 also known as a swing up bolt now there is other makes but uh, generically and really primarily Adams Wright uh, was the pioneer of this in North American hardware now now on the MS bolt you can have a key on both sides or a thumb turn or a captive thumb turn depending on fire regulations in your area most times you'll find a lever handle or a paddle handle and there's different models of paddle handles or sometimes a panic bar on the inside of these so this technician I worked with, his method of doing it was to remove all the hardware out of the door, take his carbide hole saw. Now this isn't a carbide, this is a bimetal. Um, I have some carbide, but I don't always use them uh, for that. But he'd take the pilot drill out and use the holes in the aluminum prep to go through the astrical, whether it's a flat steel or whatnot. So the aluminum door would guide his hole saw right through the metal into the steel after the astrical was mounted without the hardware in the door and cut your hole. Now I'd done that. I had done that easily 10 years earlier as well. But what I found from it is the time it takes to remove the hardware and reinstall it was just wasted time. And in some cases, some of the hardware was pretty funky to, to reinstall because of bad install in the first place and that and just didn't just didn't rock my boat to be honest with you uh waste of time and and that so what i come up with during the process was a guide system now i'm just unscrewing these i keep these in uh in an old ms bolt in my truck so they're always they're not the threads aren't getting damaged now this is the guide system okay now if i screw it into a mortise case and take out the working cylinder and i want a hole in the other side of the door be it a wood door and i want to accurately line it up whoops first of all thread it in jeff God, you gotta love it sometimes. There we go. Now I will tighten down the screw in the right spot so it won't be spinning. And then I just take a normal quarter inch drill and boom, I go right through the middle of the door in the right location. And then when I take that drill out, take my guide out I'm ready to put the cylinder back in or in this case what I will do is take my hole saw to drill that hollow metal door or to drill the wood door put my guide pin in now I don't even need this in as a guide. I can leave it in if I want to, but I have the guide in the actual door to spin through and cut my hole perfectly accurate. Never had a hole that isn't perfectly able to screw a mortar cylinder in perfectly. So that's a hollow metal door case. Now the nice thing with the guide pin, by the way, you can make these guide pins out of drill rod. I actually have a bunch of ejector pins out of the automotive punch press industry that eject the molds after the punch um, I'm not sure what they're made out of but I think they're made out of chrome molly so when I'm installing an astrical and thus the reason for two different sizes is I will take 
out just the exterior cylinder. Obviously I take the pull handle off the door and I hang the astrical, whether it's a flat or a three bend, by one of the top bolts. Normally there's four sex bolts that go through the door. Okay. And then before even installing the astrical, I have the cylinder out and I have my guide screwed all the way in. When is it, this is done, and that, and you can see my grooves here, they're lined up with the retain the set screw to know that I'm getting the set screw locked into the right position. So now, with this rod shortened up, I can now guide through. And I've actually corrected preps on aluminum doors that have been a little off with this same system. But the astrical's hung seven foot normally, or sometimes longer, eight foot astrical, from one of the top screws. Okay, I swing it into place, then I drill and mount one of the bottom screws. Out of the four screws, sex bolts with Allen screws, and that, I now... Uh, when this is in the door, I will take my square on the aluminum and I will adjust it, putting it against the glass stop edge and drawing a pencil line across the aluminum. Then I will take the other screw, or other square, sorry, not screw, other square, usually I use two squares for this, mark there again from the glass stop to the center of the hole. Okay. And I don't have to draw this on the aluminum in this case, but I do just to make sure I come down just to make sure I'm in center. So now when I swing the astrical into place on two of the four screws, I can take that same line that's usually, excuse me for a second, just propping this so I can do it. Okay, there's usually a pencil line over here. And I can now put my square in the right place to transfer it onto the astrical. Okay, so once I draw the line on the astrical, doesn't matter now if the astrical is taken away, but now I can also use this that's guided from that stop, that same stop, and boom. And now I've got a location. So I take the bottom bolt out, which takes two seconds in the astrical. I swing it up this way. I prop the astrical. I will drill a starter hole, sometimes an eighth inch hole, and then I'll step it up with usually a step drill and go up as high as three eighths of an inch. This hole doesn't have to be accurate that goes through the astrical, whether it's a flat or a three bend. It just has to be accurate enough that I see the guide hole. Now, you gotta do it slow or keep this lubricated. I do a combination of both. I spray it with Tri-Flow or other silicone based, as well as I go medium speed. This will drill right through my steel. And now when I put that astrical in place with all four bolts, I have a perfect hole for screwing, re-screwing back in my mortise cylinder through the astrical into the door. Okay, so this system saves me the time and the energy of either pulling out, whether it's an MS bolt or a dead latch, I don't write dead latch 4513, also known as a swing up bolt. Please let me know in your part of the world or country what this is called, whether it's called a mortise case or a mortise cassette. Um, I always known it as a mortise case. Now, another thing I did, just so that you know, is I made a tool, because sometimes this just goes below the aluminum a little bit, and I made a tool. That's why I ground those marks in there, not only as a reference where my things were, to unscrew it. Obviously, this tool you should know what I made that out of. That's an easy one. 
an ANSI 4 and 7 8 strike. Boom, there's the old screw hole. Cut the screw hole off here. Cut the lip of it off. Boom. And that unscrews that perfectly. Okay. Now, basically, how did I make these? That's the next big thing. Oh, and by the way, on one of my other videos, I've talked about this pencil. Get yourself and an installation pencil such as this. This is the Hultafors, H-U-L-T-A-F-O-R-S. This is a steel barrel. Takes an expandable lead. Can come out that long. This will help you locate holes in door closers and other hardwares. Has a sharpener right there when you want to sharpen it. Uh, I have like five or six of these in my truck in different kits for installation. One of the best installation pencils you'll ever have. Um, they last for years. You take care of them. And they're the greatest thing since sliced bread. So let's get back to the making of these. Okay. These are made out of just grabbing the stuff right now these are made out of dummy cylinders obviously there's a different length there and that what I do is I take an old mortise case or an old used uh, dead latch and I'll screw it in there so I can put it on a drill press I'd love to have a lathe I drill through a center hole first I mark it out get center stamp it with a punch and then I take the drill press down get my center hole first okay usually about an eighth inch hole then I upsize it I upsize it for the drilling and tapping in this particular case I cut the face off of it you see there that's actually the face now it's had a little hole saw mark sorry I was out of frame there but in this case I've actually cut the face off of it with a grinder and then I ground it back these would be a lot simpler to be made on a lathe be mass produced by a manufacturer now this kit here and I gotta remember that this lens on this camera I can't be back out of the lens or out of the shot so this is the center part of the insert okay then you buy you buy different sizes that's the quarter inch that screw into here so yes and these are hardened if they ever wore out I could change them out if they ever get sloppy that I'm not getting perfect holes I buy different sizes that's an eighth inch size that was a quarter inch I think I go all the way up to three eighths on these guides okay now these are a press fit but these go in other material when I'm making a jig in this case they didn't go into other material because I happen to know the standard thread for this here so obviously it's been drilled and tapped okay the brass has been drilled and tapped for that standard thread um, and I carry a tap in there and this one if I took a flat screwdriver I could screw it out as you can see I've actually shortened this hardened insert just so that I get it into like the dead latches and I keep a couple of these on the top that I keep in the kit and the actual thread on the hardened insert drill insert is a half inch 20 national fine so this once it's drilled to the right size I just drill it to the half inch 20 national fine and yes I could look up the pre-drill size I'm not going to bother right at the moment but that's now I buy these off of a supplier up in Canada called Lee Valley these hardened inserts I'm sure you can find them in different places online and Lee Valley is also available through the US through 
uh, mail order only or online only. Uh, they have a distribution in New York for online. Um, and yeah, it's just something in their tool arsenal they sell for people making jigs. So I love those things. And you will see another video where I've used them quite a bit. Uh, and I make different things out of them. This one has a specific purpose. Uh, these inserts are pressed in, in a vise. And as you can see, I have different sizes of holes. There's some eighth inch, there's some quarter inch, another eighth inch. I think these are three eighths. And this is a jig for the installation of a certain type of electronic lock. And I will show you this system. This has a lot of components to it. Makes easy setup and installation when you're installing lots of the, a particular model. I holding off showing that video till I make one that I'm installing lots of now one of these and I will show you how it all comes together for a newer model lock I'm installing and I've been using the paper template now for about two three years and I want to make one of these because it just makes it three times quicker um, so yes once again this is Jeff from locksmithing innovations I hope you found this video useful and educational definitely Get a set of these, make a set. Now, if you know somebody who has a metal lathe, even easier to make. If you know a manufacturer that's interested in making some of these available for everybody to purchase, let them know. Tell them to watch the video. I never try to restrict the manufacturing of any tools. I want to share knowledge. This is the best way of getting your hole for mortise cylinders in through steel astricals, other latch guard plates. We have an extreme amount of vandalism happening in my area right now, a break-in through, and we have to drill a lot of astricals, whether it be flat or three bend. And this is the best system. Now, if you don't have the time or equipment to make your own, as I say, you can possibly find a machine shop that'll turn them out on a lathe. I certainly wish. Uh, when I started it as a young lad, I started as a machinist apprentice for eh, about two years, but I majored in machine shop in high school. So um, I started getting studying to be a locksmith when I was 17 through a correspondence course. Um, and then I got a job as an apprentice for Chubb, Mosler and Taylor when I was 18. So Jeff from Locksmithing innovation i hope you like this video number 14 please subscribe please leave comments hit the like button uh, i am very happy with uh, the amount of views the videos are 